Payment team. Today, I would like to share the topic about how we transform our payment roles using concept Git as a database. Now you might be hearing that, OK, Git as a database, it, it looks a little weird, but it's not new. Many of you are using Git as a database, but we just don't coin that term as a database. And that's where we would like to see today. And uh, let's see. Uh, so please bear, be, bear it with me for some time. And uh, let's see. So how we will do it, uh, today I will show the problem we were facing in the payment team, uh, how we came up with Git as a database term, uh, how we implemented it, and let's see the demo of it. So from payment team, uh, I think everyone in Agoda is touching payment team. If you're going to the app, website, you're just making a booking. But half of the booking is actually the payment. Like unless you make a payment, you cannot go anywhere. And that's where the complexity relies allies with the payment team, that it's payment team's responsibility to provide you the better experience. And how we do it in the back end is like a bunch of complexity, which we deal with the multiple gateways, multiple currencies has the multiple regulations, multiple payment methods we want to provide. I think Idan shared in the morning that, okay, well, how UPF is actually helping across Agoda, especially activity and flight. And that's where actually we are playing a major role. But that role comes with a lot of complexity. And that complexity, how we are managing it, we have in backend multiple rules. What we call it actually, that, that takes a decision that, OK, if, you, if we get a request from booking, where it should go? Either it should select the PayPal gateway, ADN gateway, which merchant account of it, because it, it, it allies with a lot of complexity, cost optimization, backup, regulation, and and some of the things which product know how to get value from this gateway is merchant and deals, which which we don't bother, but that, that gives us a lot of value. And if you see the impact of the payment across Agoda or the payment routing impact, all transactions of Agoda, we are actually making almost daily a change in payment route that, okay, product comes, I, I can see better deal with this, change the rule. Uh, we are saving millions of dollars per year just changing the rules because we are getting some cost optimization things. One more thing we are doing is like, if you see this 28 gateways we are dealing, many gateways sometimes randomly get shuts. And that's where then the rules responsibility comes that, okay, if transactions going to the gateway, we should actually have the fallback for each of the requests so that customer don't feel this pain when some gateways is down, some technical issue with some unknown, unknown countries. And that's where then the, the complexity lies. Now, Looking at this, what we were doing in future, in previous, I think last last to last year, that we had this traditional rule change process. It's I think everywhere, a lot of companies do it. Like okay, we have the rules initially. The rule were small, ten rules, one gateway. We started putting in a database. Now that database, what we did is like okay, everything is working fine. We started adding the rules. Once we started adding more rules, it's getting complex because Agoda was actually now like processing a lot of bookings. And that's where what we were doing is like the database stays there. How we were changing the rules now is like, okay, product coming us, change the rule. What we do, we download that rules in CSV from database. We change one rule there and we upload the data CSV again in the database. Or you can say we change the role in row in database. Now it looks easy, but the impact of it is so high is like if one rule it get misplaced, you can see a booking drop in production. And that's where it's actually the importance of this rule change, routing, and payment comes. And I think everyone in payment team feeling that pain that okay, what we were doing. If you if you gave them a task for rule change, they will they will be fear or they're afraid about this. And it's I'm I'm sharing you the story of rule change or the config change, but it's not new in the industry. As soon as you see there is a huge configuration huge rule change. Imagine that, okay, when company is small, there is a small rule, small config, you can manage it. But as soon as it grows like a 4,000 rules, 20,000, these variables for DevOps, uh, Kubernetes, Docker, everywhere this these things come, it gets complex. And it, it gets complex in a way that it, it, it become more, you can say beyond repairable, if you keep it in database and start adding or making changes on the fly. And that's where then there was a need that, okay, we should find a solution for it. And that's where we started spending time on it. And we came up with a concept. I would I would go rather little later on that concept. But uh, first, I think, uh, let's go to the Git where we started. 
I think Git is not new for everyone. Everyone knows Git like, okay, what Git is providing us, as soon as you see Git, you imagine that, okay, you have the code, you are cloning it, or you are pushing some command. And that's where then we started exploring Git is like, okay, what Git giving us, Git gives you the version control, rollback, replication, then actually you can audit any of these things in Git. And that's where I think it's it's not only about us, but a lot of configuration in last six years, seven years in industry, everyone started putting this Kubernetes config, DevOps config, everyone is moving into the Git. And and it's it's for the purpose because database is not made for such things. How how Git is actually powering Agoda and the world. If you see the database team, I think we, we learned a lot from database team while designing this. Then the day of the white label team, uh, code repos, I think data pipeline, everyone in Agoda, if you see, they're trying to store something in Git and they're trying to utilize Git's, uh, Git's possibility. And, and while thinking about this, what we came is like, okay, uh, use can we use Git as a database? And why we wanted to do this? Because we seen that, okay, the configuration or the rules if you keep more in the Git, that's also not viable. Why? Because if you keep a lot of files there, it becomes your text file, and then you can audit it, but you don't have proper ways to edit it, update it. And that's where then we thought is like, we wanted a combination of both. We wanted the flexibility of database, where I can show the rules or the configuration as a database, where I can show the rows, I can search primary keys, some of those things. But I wanted the flexibility of Git. The flexibility of Git I wanted, like I wanted my rules or anyone in the database, you should get a version control. If you have to do it in database, you will need to spend exponential time. Similar thing we wanted is like a rollback. If you add a rules in database, we had this issue like, okay, someone uploaded some old CSV and now no one knows even what to roll back. So these things we do not want it to have it in our system. The third thing we wanted is like the auditing. If you comes one year later, you want to see what we changed over the year, you can see it using the Git. And these things actually lacks in a database, but it's not only that, okay, database is wrong. So we wanted to combine this both and we wanted to present Git as a database. And we decided to use it like this. Let, let's see how we how we did it in our system. Like uh, we, we term it like, okay, we, we wanted to transform our role using Git, but we do not want it to lose the capability of the database. And how we did is like, okay, we divided it into two parts. One is like, okay, use the GitLab where you, you put your code, uh, you put your test pipeline, you can merge the result, you can actually approve it. The second part we wanted to do is like we created one front end portal, which actually simplified for Git users. So how we actually do it, let, let's see in the next next slide uh, that uh, the first part we did is like, okay, we literally mapped our Git uh, with the database, database, you can say the namespace. Like we, we created a folder structure is like, okay, the production, the staging, QA, this will be like your database. Then you create a table around it, like, okay, payment rule is one table. Then you actually have this activities, uh, flight, hotel, these are the, your record set. Same way we do it in a database, we try to map it this way. Then there was one problem that, okay, for hotel, we had like uh, all payment methods, the hotel file can go too big. Similarly, the same rule is for activity and hotel. So how we should do it? So we did one logical mapping in our code and that helped us to present it's exactly the same way we show it in the database. Let's see in the the one more part we were facing it like it's okay that you we put everything in the database in the Git. Now how the user should use it? I think white label, DevOps, lot of teams are pushing users to clone the repo, add a git commit, create a YAMR. And this part we wanted to avoid because the files and the rules are so complex. If they clone it, they will not understand what to change. And this is where we wanted to hide the complexity. So what we purposefully choose is like we, we actually do not want it to go command based, but we went API based and we came up with the idea that, okay, let's wrap everything under the API. So user even will not realize whether you are using internally Git or database. And how we take an advantage of it, I think GitLab's APIs, a lot of teams are using it. And that's actually a great, uh, like ev everything you can do with GitLab APIs, which you can do with a command. And that's, that's I think, the one part which we take an advantage. How we, under the hood, we did it. 
like we we created one application we called it like a back office application for payment where we connected to the git and on front end what we show we show actually let me show you something we showed to the front end to the user is like this so user do not even need to go to the git command he do not need to git pull he have access to that repo or not it doesn't matter we control access using our octa and we put everything here so that if you want to change a rule even a po can come po can come here add a rule and po will not even sure that okay whether i should uh, create a git or all he will get a merge request i will show it in a demo but more or less this is the way we we presented it uh, the second part is like okay uh, how we were did it under the hood uh, uh, how we did it under the hood is like, okay, if imagine that you want to edit one file, like, okay, you want to add one rule to the hotel. What we did is like, okay, for that, we came up with some logical mapping in our system that, okay, once you, once you click a rule, uh, once you click a rule here, like, okay, you create the rule ID payment method, based on that, we create a file name. So what will happen next is like, okay, based on that, we will pull that file first, then we will add the rule inside that and then we will commit that file and we will not commit that file to the master branch but we will commit that to the new branch which you will create i will show it in the demo how it looks like and uh, that's uh, that's how we did it now let's let's go to the demo i think that that can be the that can be a little interesting that imagine that okay you you have to change some rule for thailand like uh, suddenly po comes that okay for mastercard i'm getting better deal from checkout and uh, i need to change the rule so what he need to do is like, okay, he going to the our back office portal, he's selecting the master branch there. So he will see all the master, master branch rule here. What he will do next is like, okay, he will click on add rule and he will click a rule. He will create a rule there. Once he create a rule, what we will ask him is like, okay, you are creating a rule, but tell us which, what is the branch name for you? So the branch name actually will create a ticket so that we don't have to deal with SOX compliance while creating a merge request internally and all of this. Later, what will happen is like, as soon as he click on the merge request, he will see on front end only that, okay, which merge request is created, what's his uh, test pipeline result, what's the result of the, the pipeline he's running. So all of those things we will show it here and even below we will show that okay what rule he changed or what he rule rule he added so some of those things what how it helped us is like you completely abstracted your uh, git using the back office portal and you you don't care whether it's a database or git while taking advantage of all these gits now if you need to go and see that okay how the merge request got created you can see here that okay uh, the reviewer now next question is like okay the reviewer is the developer who he will need to go here and he will need to make sure that okay the rule is added properly but imagine that he missed something here and he he also don't know what to review because some of the numbers some priority and all so what we did is like okay we in on each commit once you create a merge request we showed here that the pipeline we once we run the pipeline here uh, the reviewer and approver and everyone will see the result that, okay, if you make one rule change like this, what the GitLab will do, GitLab will provide a result that, okay, if you change the rule, this will be the impact of it. And that's where then this, uh, the the issue of all of those unknown and everything, we will able to solve it. But imagine that, okay, we even failed here because the approver didn't know what to approve. What we did later is like, okay, approval approved it here. Now he need to deploy it. So what we had here, the last, last you can say is like the fence for us is like, okay, uh, deploy it with canary deployment so that you are, we are releasing the rule for 25% first. And once we do it, we will able to see it. If something goes wrong, we have a rollback option. And all of those things we were actually losing or we were not having it when you keep the configuration in database. So wherever you see uh, the opportunity for such things, I think uh, the Git as a database term can 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 help you a lot, and that's that's our learning for us is like okay, if you have any complex rule configuration, then what the, the Git Git is good for you, and if you if you wrote the little back office, it can be great for you. Automation testing, easy rollback, approval process. If you want everything control change in your system, you can use the uh, configuration. Uh, the the uh, the problem we faced initially is like we had to spend little time on figuring out how to 
how to make it like a standardized because we made it for us we wanted to we wanted to span it for some more teams and we are facing with this ui and the gitlab wrapper but eventually we will try to come up with that uh, that's that's the learning for us uh, yeah i think that's that's pretty much about uh, git as a database if you need any help or anything please connect to the payment team thank you